everyone. <clears throat> well, there's a little bit of irony in that uh, we're talking about the fifth chakra and hold on, I'm muting my phone here. Um, we're talking about the fifth chakra and I've got a little bit of phlegm going on because I just had a ginger, um, a little ginger candy finger. <laughs> so anyway, um, so we're gonna have a little quick discussion about the fifth chakra before we go into the asana for the fifth chakra. Um, and I wanna preface this by saying that, um, so it's June 7th and we're still in the, um, we're still protesting around the country for Black Lives Matter, as we should, um, because of the murder of George Floyd by police. And when I realized that it was time for us to do the fifth chakra, and it was now, um, I was a little bit nervous because I want to make sure that I'm sensitive to the whole thing. Um, I'm white. I don't know what it's like to be black. I don't know what it's like to be black in America. Um, and, you know, the symbolism of the throat chakra and how that's related to, you know, the pictures that we're seeing, the videos that we've seen, I can't breathe. Um, and talking about how riots are um, a response from people who are not heard. Um, we're talking about people using their voice and we're talking about people getting pepper sprayed and they're unable to breathe at the protests. Um, and we're seeing videos and people are experiencing the, you know, the police destroying water bottles, water that you could drink and water to flush your face. Um, so there's, there's so much symbolism that, uh, I mean, I don't, I can't, I can't get into it all. And it's going to be different for each person. Um, as a white person, first of all, I just want to comment, like it really, I dislike these color designations um, because, um, you know, I've seen black people that have extremely dark skin and I've seen black people that have, you know, mocha colored skin, um, coffee with a splash of cream. Uh, and white does not describe me. Um, it lumps people together and it doesn't really get to their culture, their ethnicity and so forth. So I kind of don't like it. Um, but um, everybody's having their own experience um, in this unrest. It's necessary. We need to be going through this. Um, we've been um, complacent for a long time. We thought that racism was cured because we elected a black president at one point. So um, this is necessary and it's going to be hard. And a lot of us, um, I don't want to say on both sides, um, a lot of us um, non people of color, perhaps, may be trying to figure out what's my part. How do I say the right thing? What is the thing to say? Do I say anything? Um, and I think that that's a really appropriate um, thing to think about and discussion to have as it relates to the fifth chakra and as it relates to what's going on in the world. Um, my personal opinion is as long as you're having a discussion and you're trying to be sensitive and mindful and you're open and honest, starting it with saying like, I don't know, help me. Help me to understand 
you know, Black Lives Matter versus saying All Lives Matter, for example, um, or saying, how do I participate in this and not be offensive and not get in the way and not make it worse? Having those conversations is important. And it's hard because, you know, a lot of this now is, um, I mean, I don't, I don't want to make it worse. I want to be an ally. Um, and it's 400 years of people who have been trying to, to speak up and fight for themselves. And they've been trying to, to get white people to come on board and just having a black history month isn't enough, you know? So, um, open, honest communication. That's hard, especially in that we have, um, sort of a culture that we've created because of social media of um, not really actually having face-to-face -face communication anymore. Here we are, we're on Zoom. Um, or trying to have a text conversation or having a conversation um, over a Facebook post. Uh, it just doesn't, doesn't do it justice. So, learning how to have communication in person again. That can be a challenge as well. Trying to figure out what you actually believe, being honest with yourself about maybe inherent racism, racism, you don't mean to be, but maybe all of a sudden you recognize, oh my gosh, I've been saying that that thing, or I have that thought, or whatever. So acknowledging it, half the battle, and recognizing it, acknowledging it, apologizing to yourself and never people around you for having had that thought or said that thing. And then you move forward. And then you say, you know what? I've learned. I'm going to change. Help me change. So there are a lot of aspects to, um, to this, to this time in history. This is huge. People, we need to know, we need to understand. If you don't realize how big this is, take a look around, read your history. I mean, this is, this is enormous, what is happening right now. This, This is a revolution. That's needed to happen for a very long time. I don't know why I'm crying. <laughs> Revolutions are amazing. Because people are finally standing up. And people are coming together to stand up for a group of people who have been trying so hard for hundreds of years that have been suppressed and oppressed by white people in America. And finally, finally, shit's happening. This is important. So find your place in it. And maybe not all of us are going out to riots or protests or not all protests or riots. I don't mean to say it like that. Um, hopefully it doesn't turn into a riot. Sometimes that's how you're heard though. Um, maybe you're posting educational things on Facebook. Maybe you're helping people around you. Maybe you live in a small town and maybe you're trying to slowly, mindfully, kindly tell people, you know, what you're doing is racist and this is why, and this is how you can do better. Right? So let's talk about the fifth chakra, throat, larynx, um, vocal cords, um, Vishuddha is what this is. And um, so some other, some themes about the fifth chakra, which I think just makes sense. Like there's nothing about the fifth chakra that's um, mysterious, truly. It's, you're talking about communication, truth. Um, and this book in here talks about inspiration, which I think is great. Um, and, you know, we hear a lot about 
truth to power and speaking your truth. Um, they're kind of strange phrases to me, like put those words put together are a little bit clunky and they don't, I don't always understand exactly what they mean sometimes. Um, but being authentic um, is so freeing. Um, several years ago, I went through a meditation and came out with honor my authentic self, honor my energy, and honor my passions. And those three things put together for me were exactly what I needed to make a huge total life change. So if I take those three, three things and every single thing that I do, every big decision that I make, even little decision, am I, am I honoring my passions? First, you got to figure out what your passions are. I mean, that's my meditation, not yours, maybe. Honoring my energy, which is a big deal because I'm a physical person, and honoring my authentic self. You got to figure out what's your authentic self? Who do you want to be? Um, who do you feel like you've been suppressing? Um, you know, are you a person of color that's been trying to fit into a white world? Um, are you a white person who is trying to find like some identity because white just seems like, meh, you know, do you seek culture? Um, or are you just simply like trying to find, what do I believe anymore? What do I believe now? You know, what is my authentic self? What have I been holding back? Um, for me, I was holding back because of a relationship that I was in. And I can't blame the relationship because I was in it too, right? So, um, so anyway, um, some colors that go along with, um, with this chakra, light blue, sky blue, which kind of makes sense because we're talking about air um, and the breath. Um, and even though when we're talking about communication, First, you might think like verbal communication, but also like um, communicating within yourself, being honest and true to yourself. Um, so blue, sky blue, light blue. Um, and <clears throat> so you're talking about the physical areas in the body, the throat, the neck, the esophagus, the windpipe, but also your shoulders and your jaw. So this whole sort of area um, and I would also include, since we're talking about communication, breathing, talking, speaking, um, I would also include like the muscles that it takes to talk. Um, I would also include the muscles that it takes to breathe. So the muscles that help lift the shoulders, lift the shoulder girdle. And I would also include the muscles that help to expand and contract, even though like the heart chakra the fourth chakra is really in the center of that. I would include the things that help you communicate, um, physically help you communicate. Um, let's see here. So what else? Okay, so on the spiritual level, truth um, is what you're seeking is is what you're looking for with the fifth chakra what does truth mean to you um is it honesty is it saying what is true in the moment um there's also a kindness <clears throat> when you're talking about truth because sometimes the full truth isn't helpful um, being kind with telling the truth. And then the flip side is lying, secrecy. Um, so being able to be true to yourself, true to others. So there's a lot. When you say the word truth, it means a lot. There's a lot to it. It's not, it's not easy maybe simple yeah a lot of things are simple but that doesn't mean they're easy they're super complicated um so in nature the things that we're looking at 
because the, the element for this is ether. So now we're getting out of air and we're getting into these more, um, everything else from this up is ether and space and the unknown, the waiting to be known. Um, so we've already hit all of the, the things that have elements here on earth. Um, so this is ether and we're talking about blue sky, calm sea, still water. Um, I don't know. Why is it calm? Why is it still? I can see water. Um, there is a simplicity to it. Um, but that's, those are the things that correspond to, to this in nature. Um, the mantra for the fifth chakra is hum. H-A-M, but you pronounce it H-U-M, hum. Um, and when you are um, practicing this, and we're actually going to, in the, um, uh, in the asana, it's going to be, we're going to be doing om instead. Um, I think it's a little bit easier to go through, but you can certainly do hum as well. Um, <clears throat> om technically is when you get into the, the seventh chakra, the last chakra. Um, but it's still speaking, Ellie, honey, you gotta get in the way. <laughs> but it's still a form of communication and it is a nice mantra. Um, when, so I like this book anyway. This is um, a book that I've used in class before, um, the Handbook of Chakra Healing. And this book also breaks it down into like the developmental stages. So the fifth chakra would be related to sort of like, well, I certainly don't want to say middle age, 25 to 29 to 35, where you're sort of unfolding. Um, I like to think that I'm sort of revisiting that kind of time in my life anyway. Like this is a time in my life when I'm really, um, no, I don't want to say resetting the clock, but I'm going back and I'm saying, okay, there were things that I didn't do. I held back. Okay. I found myself, I think for right now. And so I do feel, I don't feel 44, I feel younger than that. I feel like I'm doing a whole different stage of life again. And I like this. It's unfolding. Um, um, discrimination. So let's be specific. When we're talking about discrimination, um, we're not talking about prejudice and saying like, um, you can, you can practice discrimination, um, in a positive way. Okay. So if you are, um, if you are being very specific about what you're choosing, what you're saying, okay? So you're choosing um, specific words to express yourself. That's the kind of discrimination that's, po that's positive, as opposed to saying, um, I'm not going to allow black people in my store. I'm not going to make a cake for a gay couple. Okay. I'm not arguing whether or not, I'm not arguing the political side of that thing, um, but I do think that they're wrong. Um, so, but then also having a strength in the fifth chakra in communication and in truth, multifaceted and in, multifaceted interests. Um, they're also saying that, um, and musicality. So, being able to have many interests, you have a diversity in things that you're interested in. These things might overlap. They may be completely separate and different. Um, and that's, um, that opens you up to more things. So if you're interested in more things, you've probably read multiple things. So it's, it's being able to it's expanding your worldview. Let's put it like that. You know, when you're talking about diversity, 
Um, that's required for healthy anything. You don't just eat one food. I mean, truly, like if I could have coffee and bagels all day, I think I would be happy, but then I wouldn't be because my body needs diverse foods. I need to be around diverse people because I hear diverse thoughts and ideas and different backgrounds and different foods. That's healthy. Um, having diverse um, uh, group of people, different mindsets, that's important for a healthy culture, for a healthy person. Um, so when you've got a weakness in the fifth chakra, this can express itself in a need for admiration and for and it shows as intolerance. I'm not going to point out who might have a weakness in their fifth chakra. Think for yourself. Um, and one of the affirmations for this is, I open myself to the power of truth. That can be hard. The truth can be challenging. You may not want to hear it. It may, you, it may not be comfortable. But discomfort is a form of challenge that is good, right? Because if you are uncomfortable, then you're learning. Discomfort is a form of communication. Discomfort is saying, I've been doing the same thing for a really long time, and now I'm going to do something different. Ooh, maybe that feels different in my body because maybe I've just been running, and that's the only movement I've been doing for a really long time. So then I feel discomfort when I'm trying to do some pigeon poses. Or I've had this one mindset for the, whole, for the longest time, for my entire life. I've had this belief system. Oh my God, somebody came and challenged that. That's really uncomfortable for me because I have to like, oh, I have to think about something new and different that may go against what I previously, a belief that I previously held. So um, yeah, so discomfort is part of the game in um, finding power and truth. So um, our asana that goes along with this is going to be some chanting and movements that help open up the chest, open up the throat, stretch the throat. Um, you can practice ujjayi through this or not, whatever's comfortable for you. Um, and we will be um, taking um, mostly five breaths in most of these poses. So anyway, so that's my little spiel about the fifth chakra. There's a whole lot more to it. Again, I could talk for days about each individual chakra. Um, take a look into it. If you have questions, let's talk about it. Um, and I will see you in the next um, video where we actually do the asana. Bye, guys.